Hi guys, welcome to the class 2 of Inkscape course. In this class, I will demonstrate you about fill and stroke menu, snap control bar, align and distribute menu, and transform menu. First of all, we have to set the preview of our page. So go to view and select it to custom. Again go to view, go to show and hide and make sure that all of these options are turned on. Now go to file and select the document properties. Select the display units to pixels and custom units to also pixels. Change the width to 1280 and height to 720 pixels like this. Now first I will demonstrate you about fill and stroke menu. As you can see that this menu isn't appearing on your screen. Here you can see this icon. Simply left click on this icon and you can see that the fill and stroke menu is appearing on your screen. Now select on this zoom to fit to page. Now select the pen tool and select this a regular bezier path and from the shape select none. Left click once, hold down the control key to draw a horizontal line and left click again like this and press enter on the keyboard. Here you can see that this line is appearing very thinner and it's almost invisible. So you have to increase the width of the line. So in fill and stroke menu, you can see an option stroke style. Simply select the width of the line to say 10 pixels. And you can see that the stroke width of the line is increased to 10 pixels like this. Now there are different options like this is a regular line. If you want to convert this line into dotted or dashes, then simply select this drop down menu. And here you can see that the number of options are appearing. When you select on this dotted option, you can see that your line is converted into the dotted one. And again select on this drop down menu and scroll it down like this and select on this dashes and you can see that now the line is converted into the dashes. Select this line and again select the dashes and scroll up and simply select this regular line. You can select any of the shape depending on your choice. And here you have the options for the markers. Simply select this left side marker and select this arrow. And you can see that the arrow is appearing on the screen. This arrow is looking much bigger. You can decrease the size of this arrow by simply decreasing the width like decrease the width to say 5 pixels and you can see that the size of arrow is also reduced and for this right corner you can also select this arrow like this there are different elements which you can assign to your line like this one and for this corner you can select this one you can select any of the element of your own choice now simply left click and press delete on the keyboard now again select the pen tool and draw a line like this and press enter on the keyboard increase the width of the line to say 60 pixels like this now you can see that the edges of the line are sharp edges if you want to convert these sharp edges into the round ones then simply select on this round joints and round caps and you can see that the sharp edges are converted into the round ones like this select the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse like this simply cancel the fill by clicking on this cross icon and and decrease the bounding area by dragging this circular icon like this. Here you want to convert these round edges into the sharp ones then simply click on these options. And you can see that the round edges has been converted into the sharp ones. And again if you want to convert these sharp edges into the round ones then select on this round joints and round caps. And if you want to see the color of this shape then simply select on this stroke paint and here you can see the color code for this color. If you want to change the color of this shape then simply hold down the shift key and left click on this green color like this. And you can see that the color code is also changed. Now select this one and press delete on the keyboard. Now right click and duplicate it and drag it in a direction like this. Now go to path and select stroke to path. Now select both of these shapes and select edit paths by nodes tool. And here you can see in this body only two nodes are appearing as it is a single line from this point to this point. But in this body six nodes are appearing because this is not a single stroke. This is a whole body. Here you can see when you click on this line which is a solid body. Here you can see that the fill color is set to black and stroke color is set to none. And when you click on this one, you can see that the fill color is set to none and stroke color is set to 15.9. Again select edit pass by node tool. You can drag this node by holding down the left mouse button on this and dragging the mouse in a direction like this. You can see that the basic shape remains the same. We have discussed in the previous class that in the shape you can only change the dimensional parameters and the basic shape remains the same. But for the path, you can also change the basic shape like this. Now this is a stroke, if you want to see its color, then simply click on this stroke paint. And this is a solid body, if you want to see its color code, then simply click on this fill and here you can see the color code. If you want to change the color, then simply click on this yellow color and you can see that the color code is changed. If you want to assign this solid color a gradient, then simply click on this linear gradient and you can see that the gradient is applied. Select the gradient tool and here you can see two options are appearing. Simply select this one and assign this red color and for this one, Select this yellow color. If you want to assign gradient to this stroke, then simply go to stroke paint and select on this linear gradient. Again select this arrow and select gradient and you can see that a two color gradient is appearing. Simply select on this one and select this blue color. Again select this one and select this 
pink color like this. Now select both of these shapes and press delete on the keyboard. Now select the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse like this. If you want to draw a complete ellipse then simply click on this. Make the shape a whole ellipse like this. You can cancel the stroke by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and, and left clicking on this cross icon like this. And change the color to this red color like this. Now right click, duplicate it and drag the ellipse in this position like this. Now select both of these ellipses and in the fill and stroke menu here you can see the option for the opacity. Simply decrease the opacity to say 50%. Now you can easily see the overlap between two shapes. Now simply drag the mouse over them and press delete on the keyboard. Now let's continue with the next part of this tutorial in which I will demonstrate snap control bar. Again select the pen tool and draw a line like this and press enter on the keyboard. Go to stroke style and increase the stroke width to say 10 pixels like this. If you want to draw a second line exactly from the surface of this line, then first of all enable the snapping from this option and then turn on the snap to paths and nodes. And from snap to paths and nodes you have to turn on the snap to paths. Select this zoom in and out tool and drag the mouse like this. Again select the pen tool and you say when you drag the mouse in a position at the line, a small icon is appearing. Simply left click on it and drag the mouse in any direction like this and press enter. Again increase the width of this line to say 10 pixels like this and select zoom to fit to page like this one. Now if you want to draw a line exactly from the intersection point of these two lines then again select the pen tool, turn off this snap to path and select this snap to path intersection. And when you drag the mouse at the intersection point you can see the cross icon is appearing which shows the path intersection. Simply left click once and again drag the mouse in any position like this and press enter. Again you can change the stroke width to say 10 pixels like this. Now select all of these lines and press delete on the keyboard. Now select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like this. Increase its opacity to say 100% and cancel its fill color by clicking on this cross icon and assign it some stroke color by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and selecting this color with the left click of mouse like this. Now right click and duplicate it and place it here. If you want to place the corner of this rectangle at the corner of this one then Simply turn on this snap to rectangle corners and when you drag this rectangle at this point you can see it will automatically be connected at this point. Now select this one, right click, duplicate it and also drag it at this point and you can see that the corner of this rectangle is connected with the corner of this one. Now simply select these rectangles and press delete on the keyboard. Now select the ellipse tool then hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse in a direction like this. Now right click, duplicate it and drag this circle here. If you want to place the quadrant of this circle at the quadrant of this one then first turn off this snap to path intersection and snap to rectangle corners. Simply turn on this snap to quadrant points. When you drag this ellipse at this point here you can see that it will automatically be connected at the snap point. Now again right click, duplicate it and also drag this one at this point. And now you may have realized that how important are snapping options in Inkscape. Now select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like this. Now Inkscape we mostly deal with two snapping options working at a time. Like if you want to place the quadrant of this circle at the corner of this rectangle then first of all turn on the snap to quadrant and turn on snap to rectangle corners like this. Now you are playing with two snapping options. One is snap to quadrants and other is snap to corners. Simply drag this circle near the corner of this rectangle and you can see that it is automatically be connected at this point. Again right click, duplicate this circle and simply drag this circle at the corner of this rectangle like this and you can see and this quadrant is automatically be connected at this corner of rectangle. Now select all of these shapes and press delete on the keyboard. Now select the pen tool and draw a line like this. You can increase the stroke width to say 10 pixels like this. Select the ellipse tool and hold down the control key on your keyboard then hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse in a direction like this. If you want to place the quadrant of this circle at the center point of this line then, then you have to turn on two snapping options. First is snap to quadrants which is already working and the second one is snap midpoints of the line segments. When you drag this circle like this you will see that the snap to the midpoint will appear. Now select both of these shapes and press delete on the keyboard. Now select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like this. Right click Duplicate this and drag this rectangle at this position. Now left click on this rectangle, again left click. You can see that a small plus icon is appearing. This is the object's rotation center. You can also change the object rotation center by holding down the left mouse button on this plus icon and dragging it in a position like this. If you will rotate this rectangle, you can see that it will rotate about the new rotation center like this. And for this rectangle whose rotation center is still appearing in the middle, it will rotate about its center point or you can say rotation center 
like this. Now select this rectangle and press delete on the keyboard. In the snapping menu, the next option is snap to other points like midpoints, centers, origins, etc. Select this one and here we have the option for the snap to centers. Now select the pen tool and if you want to draw a line from the center of this rectangle, then simply drag the mouse here and you will see the option. Left click once and drag the mouse in any direction like this and again left click like this. Now select this one and press delete on the keyboard. Again left click on this rectangle, again left click and again you will see a small plus icon which is the object's rotation center. If you want to place the rotation center of this object at the corner of this rectangle, then you have to turn on the two snapping options. First one is snap an item's rotation and second one is snap to rectangle corners. Then hold down the left mouse button on this rotation center and drag the rotation center at any of these four corners like this one here. Now when you rotate the rectangle it will rotate about its new rotation center like this. Now select this one and press delete on the keyboard. Now this was the snapping menu. If you have any question about this then you can ask in the comments section. Now let's continue with the next menu which is align and distribute menu. Now align and distribute menu is still not appearing on the screen. To show this menu simply click on this icon which says align and distribute objects like this. Now select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like this. Now cancel the stroke by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and left clicking on this cross icon like this and assign it some solid color like this red color. Now again select the rectangle tool and draw random rectangles like this. And now select all of these rectangles. If you want to align them at the center of the page then go to align and distribute menu from the relative to select page and select center on vertical axis like this. Now you can see that the gaps between the lines are not equal. If you want to equate the gaps then simply click on this make equal vertical gaps like this. Now suppose that you say that this is your reference line and you want to align all of these lines with respect to this one. Then first select these lines hold down the shift key and select this line with the left click of mouse and you have to select this line in the end like this. Now from the relative to select last selected and then select align left edges like this. Now press delete on the keyboard, select the ellipse tool, hold down the control key, then hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse in a position like this. Now right click, duplicate it and drag it here. Now select both of these, right click, duplicate it and drag them here. Again right click, duplicate them and drag them here. If you want to align them in a single horizontal line, then select all of these and select center on horizontal axis like this. And now if you want to equate the spaces between all of these ellipses, then simply click on this equal horizontal gaps like this. And the spacing between these circles will be equated. Now simply press delete on the keyboard. Now select the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse like this. And select the rectangle tool and draw an rectangle like this. Now if you want to change their positions, then simply select both of them. And in the rearrange menu, select this exchange positions like this. Now there are different options in align and distribute menu. These options are very important in escape for continuing your workflow in a geometric manner. Now simply select both of these shapes and press delete on the keyboard. Again select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like this. Go to path and select object to path. And select edit path by nodes tool. And you can see that four nodes are appearing on the screen. Left click between these two nodes and select on this insert new node. Now select between these two nodes and again select insert new node. And select between these two nodes and again select insert new node. You can see that the three new nodes are appearing. You can distort the shape of this rectangle by simply dragging these nodes like this. If you want to restore the original shape of the rectangle then simply select these three nodes by dragging mouse over it and select this node in the last. And from the align and distribute menu from the relative to select last selected and then select align the nodes at vertical line like this. And you can see that the shape of the rectangle is restored. Also for the vertical node, select between these two segments and select insert new node and distort the shape like this. Again select this one and select the reference node at the last. From the relative to select last selected and select align on vertical axis like this. Now simply press delete on the keyboard. Now I will demonstrate you about transform menu. Now select the pen tool and left click once, hold down the control key and again left click at this position and press enter on the keyboard. Scroll down and select fill and stroke menu and in stroke style change the stroke width to say 10 pixels like this. You can rotate this line by simply left clicking once and again left clicking and, and here you will see the handles for the rotation. You can rotate this line like this. If you want to rotate this line at some specific angle like you want to rotate the line at 50 degrees then go to object select transform. In the transform menu simply select the rotate set the angle to 50 degrees and assign the rotation direction. Let's continue with this counterclockwise direction and select apply. 
and you can see the is rotated in counterclockwise direction to 50 degrees. Now, transform menu is important for rotating the objects at some specified angle. And you can also cancel this transform menu by simply clicking on this cross icon. And again, access it from going to object and select transform menu. Now, let's continue with this measurement tool which we have left in the last class. First of all, select the pen tool, left click once, hold down the control key and again left click. Press enter on the keyboard and simply increase the stroke width to say 10 pixels like this. Right click. Duplicate this and drag it in a position like this. Left click once, again left click and rotate it at some angles like this. Now if you want to place the corner of this object at the corner of this one, then simply drag it at this position and here it will be placed. Now if you want to know the angle between these two lines, then simply select on this measurement tool and hold down the left mouse button at this corner and drag the mouse in a position like this up to this corner. And you can see that the angle between the line is 19 degrees. If you think that the angle is appearing very small and you want to increase its size, then simply click on this font size and select plus. Now you can see that the values are easily visible. Measurement tool is basically used to find the distance between two objects or between the two nodes of a single object and also used to measure angles between two lines. Now simply drag the mouse over it and press delete on the keyboard. Select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle like this. Right click, duplicate it. Hold down the control key and drag this rectangle in a position like this. Control key is very important to drag the objects in a straight line. Again select the measurement tool and simply drag the mouse at this corner then hold down the left mouse button and drag this up to this corner and release the left mouse button. You can see that the angle between these two corners is zero as it is a horizontal line and the distance between these lines is 527.5 pixels. If you doesn't want to see this decimal value, here you have the option for precision. Simply set this to zero and then now you can see that a single value 520 is appearing without any decimal points now this is for class 2 if you have any question about this then simply ask in the comments section in the class 3 i will demonstrate you that how can you design custom shapes by using boolean operations and i will also demonstrate how can you design different patterns about paths and also demonstrate you about text effects that how can you place the text on a circle or any other path so like and subscribe the channel and stay up to date with the upcoming video class thanks for watching and have a nice day